Hi, I'm David Wise. I'm a video game composer and I've been composing music for video games for around 35 years. I've worked on products such as Donkey Kong Country, Snake Pass, Ukulele, Star Fox Adventures, Diddy Kong Racing, Battletoads and many, many more. So today I'm going to talk about Pixel. Now, if you're wondering what Pixel is, it is a sound set dedicated to the games consoles of the 80s and 90s and we're concentrating on the 8-bit and 16-bit era here and it's to give a flavour, the character, the vibe of those consoles for your productions. So let's have a look at the synthesis section of Usynth. There are two main controls, dark to bright and fast to slow and then there are three additional controls which are set up specifically for each preset. I've chosen this preset called Frogs in Space. Yeah. Yeah. Now the dark to bright is fairly obvious. It's like a big tone control, so it just brightens the sound or darkens it as we might want. The second one is fast to slow. And turning it to slow slows it down, but also adds a bit more character as well. The third one here on the lower pane is the vowel sound. We can add more voices with the second one. And for that 8-bit vibe, we can start to crunch it. And these are available for all 100 presets, so you can really shape your sound. Now, usually when you open a virtual synthesizer, you get greeted with lots and lots and lots of buttons, sliders, knobs, menus. Here, it's all being condensed into an easy to use interface. One thing I'd like to talk about are hardware controllers. Usynth works really well when being controlled in real time, either from your hardware controller or from your digital audio workstation, in my instance, Nuendo. Now, my main controller here is a Behringer X-Touch Compact, but I have many other hardware controllers that I could use. So just using the example of Frog in Space, let's have a listen. So having that control for me means I can make more of a performance from all of my instruments. Another thing I'd like to mention is the fact that I use a graphics pad with a pen instead of a mouse. Now I find it really quick and easy for editing virtual instruments and also for editing all the data in my door. And in my studio, I work with the graphics pad and my hardware controller all of the time. That's my ideal way of working. For my demo track Waterfall, I want a watery style 16-bit feel. Let's open Pixel and get started. I'm going to choose the preset Martian Storm as a starting point for my rhythm. And when we listen to it, it sounds more like a Martian Storm than a rhythm. So what are we going to do? I'll turn off the ambience. Turn off the finisher. I'll turn the fast slow knob to be as fast as possible. And we'll have a listen. What I want to do now is to sweep through the dark to bright sound. I'm going to change the three macro values here to give it more of a sweep and take some of that ambience down too. Next, I'll turn the finisher back on and choose the gator effect from the singles. We're making progress. The gator is synced to sixteenths. The depth is high. The gate is probably a bit too long. I want it fairly abrupt, so I'll turn the effect of the finisher up to full. Then I'll turn on my ambience again. And to get the effect I'm looking for, I'll sweep it over a two bar curve. And 
and that pretty much gives me the sound I want for my background rhythm. And now let's have a listen to the desired result playing from my door. Let's talk about the lead sound. Obviously the lead sound is the most important sound and for this I've chosen harmonica in space. I'm using the dark and bright knob a lot in this track along with pitch bend. If we go down to the button on the bottom right next to the keyboard you'll see that I've changed the bend range to 1. The bend range can go up to 4 octaves. I'm trying to recreate a plausible emulation of a harmonica and a semitone here is more than enough for a harmonica. What I'm trying to do is emulate a wind player with real-time controls and the two controller lanes we can see here are the dark bright control in U-Synth along with the pitch bend control. As a wind player runs out of breath the sound naturally becomes darker and less bright and loses a little volume and the pitch tends to fall away too. I've tried to emulate this by drawing the curves in with my graphics pen, which is a very quick way of editing and adding large amounts of controller data. On the higher controller lane, you can see the data going from bright to dark, and the lower lane shows the pitch bend data. Both work in tandem as the note falls away. Hopefully, this will give the illusion that someone is actually giving a harmonica performance. Now for this waterfalls demo I've used pixel throughout, there are no other instruments, it's all pixel. And there are no other effects either, again these are all included within pixel. I've really enjoyed making these demos and I hope you'll enjoy adding retro video game style sounds into your productions too, I know I'll be using pixel again. In fact I'm already using it in another project I'm working on because along with pixel sounding like an authentic retro video game console or two it's fast, it's easy, intuitive and fun and gives great results. So enjoy! I hope you found this tutorial useful how I use pixel within use synth and also in combination with the hardware I use to get the best out of virtual synthesizers and my digital audio workstation. So until next time thank you for watching.